Hey, Chris Duffin here with Barefoot Shoes. Today we're going to talk about the myth that minimalist shoes will make your feet sore or hurt. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but minimalist shoes are going to make your feet sore. And in fact, a 10-week study on runners showed that an increased risk of bone edema. Yeah, bruising of the bone sounds bad. That was by researcher Emily Ridge out of Brigham Young. Now, that's also in stark contrast to what we see as a whole across lifespans with the use of minimalist shoes or barefoot style lifes. And that is an improvement of healthier muscular skeletal systems. So where is the disconnect? Well, I'm gonna refer to some of Emily's other research in the course of this, but it comes down to walking into the gym. If you walk into the gym and do 50 reps of squats with 225 your first workout, you're gonna be sore. So if you throw on minimalist shoes on weak feet that haven't trained and haven't been used, what's gonna happen? Just like walking to the gym, you're gonna be sore. You need to use a basic concept called periodization. What is that? It means easing into it over time because you have to develop the tissue. You have to develop the strength in it. But I mentioned, you know, edema to the bone, bruising, like striking. How does that play a role? I've got a video a number of years ago where I dive into the piezoelectric charge that happens in bone tissue. It's basically a welding process. Yes, welding, but that's what creates the osteoblast, the calcium deposits, and basically the bone density and growth and strength in your bones happens from both a bending moment arm as well as an impact. And again, if you've been wearing overly cushioned shoes, you've got weak tissue. So I'm not just making this up. If we look at the MRIs, and this is nearly across the board of people that are being prescribed orthotics and things as it relates to plantar fascial issues, which is prescribed because of overuse type situations, overuse, inflammation, needs rest, needs recovery. Hell, there's even tire shoe brands that are focused on this, trying to promote this. And the imaging completely disproves this. Nearly all instances, there's always some outliers, are under use. That's right, atrophy of the tissue is the driver of plantar fascia in most conditions. Again, now we see the same thing in the tendons. Uh, didn't dive into the bone, I don't think that there's research on that. I myself, well, my bone density is very high because I strength train. These things happen for standard deviations above the norm. I go through this in this, this video on how you actually stimulate bone growth. It's not just by drinking up some milk and getting the calcium in the system. You have to have the stimulus for that to happen. So we need to temper these concepts with understanding it's just like the gym. Because as a whole, I mentioned healthier muscular skeletal systems. So what do we see in children? And again, this is all minimalist shoes or people that are in barefoot environments. We see less deformities in the foot. We see stronger arches in the feet. Older populations, what do we see? Improvement in balance, in <laughs> uh, a delayed onset of weakness. We see less falls. We see improvement in mobilities. Osteoarthritis, reduction in knee pain, reduction in knee adduction, less pain medication, better function in daily life. I could keep going. Oh yeah, adults, what do we see? Improvement in running form, uh, less joint uh, torque during normal gait, that's walking and running. We see stronger feet. We see an improvement in mechanics that actually uh, improves the strength of the Achilles tendon. You know, that's pretty important. And what does that do? It reduces the load on the knee. This is really fascinating stuff. We could even look at it pre-neuropathy and involve uh, diabetes, okay? You could imagine, if you're not familiar with that disease, but it has a significant impact on both the nerves uh, and the foot, can even lead to amputation. So the ability to have better function, better proprioception, better strength, all these outcomes are very significant. Why is this? 
we've got improvement in blood flow. We've got improvement in blood flow and we're actually training and strengthening the tissues. That's it. I've got a golden nugget to drop right here. I've dropped several in this conversation. You should probably watch this video a couple times. But this is really cool. I've always been a promoter of foot strengthening exercises and programs, and I do a lot of education around that. I still believe in that. But what's fascinating is just wearing minimalist shoes by itself does as much as a specific strength training program for your foot. Pretty cool. Now, I think we need to do research on the two combined together. I still recommend that even though the research isn't there, but yeah, that's just me. It's also why though when I wear minimalist shoes, the design that I prefer is without the wrap because when we talk about these concepts, you can understand the better and more that we can use the foot, it's gonna have a bigger impact. This really allows us to affect the torsional plane and it's actually the other way, the grabbing of the, the, the big toe and this metatarsal here. So this is really important. But back to the basics. Yeah, minimalist shoes, no myth. They're gonna make your feet sore to start with. That's a signal to you, back off. Ease into wearing them. Wear a little bit at a time, progress it. A great way if you're doing strength training, you know, train with your accessories for a while or train in your warm ups, and then add more. Don't go out if you're a runner and go minimalist shoes or the, the, all the bee's knees. I run 10, 20 miles a day. I'm gonna put them on and start doing that. Don't, you're gonna f yourself up. Did I cover the research clearly? Did you cover, understand the basics of exercise science? The tool is not the fix. The beauty is you are the fix. Develop stronger and healthier foot and ankle complex.